The first time we came to dance on the Palace Theatre stage was when we came for an interview with and a talent scout of scouting and did a dance called uh, for the good ship lollipop and our stage name used to be Mary and Mavis the Mayfair twins we went to dancing for from the age of two and we passed our first ballet exam when we were five I would have been a little girl and I come here with my grandparents and I saw Cinderella and it was lovely and I remember it at the theatre being in its glory um, in those days and you know the whole of Plymouth used to come here and lots of local people would dance on stage as well and then I danced for Tanner Jays so I used to perform here as well um, when I was a teenager. It was basically I've been driving past it for a long time seeing all the trees growing out the front and a few of my friends and myself sat down and we were talking about it one day and somebody said well, well don't talk about it do something about it so uh, we got together and we are doing something about it. Yes. He let us dance on the stage, which was very exciting. Although we'd been dancing all over Devon and Cornwall with Geraldine Lamb's dance troupe all through the war, we did concerts. It was built in 1898. It had a fire in here that gutted a lot of the building. And then it was restored and uh, it survived the bombing during the war. It's uh, become a bingo hall, it's been a dance theatre, it's been a, a dance academy. Laurel and Hardy. Ken Dodd spent a lot of time on the stage here. Uh, even Angela Rippon's been on the stage. I mean, I used to work 30 years ago, you know, in the bar in the Pussycat Club. And I must be honest, it's uh, brought back quite a few memories of what it used to be like here. Yeah. The Pussycat Bar was on the other side of the building, upstairs. It used to come through a side entrance years ago. And what we used to do, we used to work all the bars in the street. We used to have the Tiffs in town, Chantal room, and we'd alternate the staff and we'd take in turns working in different venues during the week. Uh, busiest venues, obviously, was the Academy. We came down, we were all sitting in the audience to watch everyone, and it was our turn, and we went up to the stage, and we danced right in the centre, the piano was to the left of our, to the left of the stage, and we danced in front of the piano and to the side, to this side, and we we did our we actually sang the first verse of "We Were a Couple of Swells." Um, we're an urban exploring group. Um, we go around and document things that I've forgotten rotting, <laughs> decayed, and document it, photograph it. And then later on in life, um, we had this sort of dance culture that came about. There was Zenas down the road, and then the warehouse, and then we came here and we saw Shaman um, live on the stage and stuff like that. Um, it was very hip. Um, but it was culture and it was just something that happened during those days. Everybody in Plymouth knew everybody in Plymouth. I mean, we were all, you know, it was a naval town, naval and marines. <clears throat> and when it kicked off, it kicked off. You had the marines against the navy and the navy against the marines. And by quarter to 11 at night, it would kick off, especially after the last stripper. Well, I witnessed a lot of things when it was the dance culture. Uh, a lot of drugs, there was lots of drinking, there was lots of um, volatile stuff happening. There was police in here with police dogs over there into the toilets. Um, there was a gun that actually went off and police had to run in. And it was a culture, a rave culture that existed like in the UK. But I think, you know, it's had its day, it's gone. <laughs> and time to move on and, and get it back to its original state, which is the, the palace.
it was it's been closed since 2006 so when there was a police raid on the building um, and basically since then it's just been left to go well the building was um, in a very wet and horrible condition at one point because all the stuff had been nicked off the roof all the lead flashings and stuff like that so as the the water came down it came down through the buildings through the ceilings and accumulated on the floors so we've had a lot of time in here um, cleaning it all out and making the the roof watertight so without the you know without making it watertight there wasn't much point in doing anything else to the building so that's what we've done and now with the help of a few volunteers and locals that have come in and helped us we're tidying the building up um, we first come down here to document it and then Dave pulled us and said can we volunteer so we come down on a Monday and Friday um, from nine in the morning to about half two in the afternoon and we've cleaned the two bars up in the top and some of the bits of stairs and The windows and windows. all the black from the windows. We painstakingly <laughs> scraped <laughs> off. That was hard work. <laughs> we've, all the wiring's been ripped out. The um, plumbing's all been ripped out and smashed. The walls are all damaged. The ceilings are all damaged. So all this is going to have to be extensively repaired. But because it's a grade two listed building, English Heritage, I want to come in and want it done a specific way. Well, the vision is that we open it up as a, as I say, community theatre, um, where it could be tea dances on a Saturday afternoon for some of the older people, youth theatres during the week, uh, at weekends or at evening times, you could have a show on, a theatre show, I don't know, a, a magician, a, a comedian, anything at all, songs, dance, theatre, bands, groups, anything that the people want in the area we can have. And one of the things we are looking for is to turn this area behind us, the Blue Room, into a restaurant so the families can come in and have a use of the place as well. It's going to be a, a community for everybody to use. It was an exciting experience because we actually got to the stage door and we came through into the dressing rooms and that was the first time we'd ever really been in there and it was so exciting to be in such an old building where we'd attended pantomimes and shows that we were brought to and it was the first time we'd actually danced on the stage at that time and it was very exciting for us and a new experience and it's something we've long remembered I'm now 74, so it's a long time since I did it. But it still reigns as one of my favourite memories. But, uh, no, it brings back some really good memories, Luke. But, um, no, that's all I, you know, time moves on, doesn't it? it it's, just, it's nice to see that somebody is trying to do something with an old building for the people of Plymouth. I would imagine it brings back quite a lot of memories for a lot of the people in Plymouth. You know. And I think if the youth and community back here, I think, you know, this would be a, you know, this would be a fabulous place once again. Um, incorporating new and old culture um, and everybody working together would be the ultimate thing for us, I think, because it's the people's palace. So.